when I took my first ride in El Toro back in 2007, my love for roller coasters was restored. It has taken me another 10 years to discover a roller coaster that would challenge my number one spot that was held by El Toro. Finally, now here in 2019, I was able to travel back to Six Flags Great Adventure and ride this legendary roller coaster once more. I was rather nervous. Would it still measure up to the levels I held it in my mind? Or would it become a disappointment? Well, now that I wrote it multiple times once again, I'm ready to tackle these questions and give my review of this world-class wooden coaster. Presentation El Toro is not only a great roller coaster, it's a work of art. The ride is something to just look at. The giant wooden structure towers over the area, only being dwarfed by King Ka. But the whole aesthetic of El Toro is great. The ride station is a Mexican-style mission, which was actually the previous station for Viper, but it fits in perfectly with a ride. In some ways, I think the whole El Toro name and theme was inspired by the original station and amplified by the ride's layout. Being a Six Flags park, theming is always going to be minimal, but with what they have and how they have used it, I think it looks great. The roller coaster trains also have that nice touch with the bull head attached to the front car. Unfortunately, Six Flags has a stupid Kia car wrap that goes over the side of each train, but thankfully it's not extremely obnoxious like other train wraps that are currently being used on other roller coasters within the Six Flags chain. Something to note, El Toro used to look a little better back in the day when Rolling Thunder was still there because you couldn't see the high-speed turns. It was all hidden in the infield of Rolling Thunder, so it's unfortunate that the aspect was lost, but again, it's not really a big deal. More of an observation. Again, because Six Flags is an amusement park and not a theme park, I really don't think I could ask more when it comes to presentation, so I'm giving El Toro a score of 10 for presentation. Ride Intensity El Toro is a prefabricated wooden coaster by Intamin. This means that the ride was built in sections at a warehouse with laser precision accuracy. Then it was taken to the park and assembled together like a Lego set of sorts. This process makes a wooden coaster so much smoother and in theory will increase the ride's lifespan. This type of engineering also allows for more manufacturers to create more intense wooden coasters than your typical build from scratch that they do right at the park. El Toro delivers some of the strongest and most sustained moments of airtime that you will ever find on a wooden coaster. The first three drops are something for the history books. If you sit in the back row, that first drop is arguably the best drop on any roller coaster in the world. It is insane. The first two ejector hills after the first drop are also just as intense. These two hills deliver some good sustained airtime. Depending on what row you sit in, it changes from ejector to strong floater. I guess flojector, but I'm not one to use that word. Anyways, moving on. The first turn around has some great positive Gs, a few laterals thrown in for good measure. The ride has another great airtime moment as you cross over the final remains of Rolling Thunder. The ride then transitions into a spaghetti bowl of crazy turns as you're thrown into multiple directions in quick succession. El Toro never lets up until you're back on the brake run. It's a non-stop action ride. As a wooden coaster, I don't think it gets much more intense than this. Well, maybe with Lightning Rod, but I've yet to ride it because it was closed when I was there. But yeah, El Toro is about as good as it gets. Intensity gets an obvious 10 rating. Fun Factor if you find yourself feeling a little down, why not strap into El Toro and give yourself a great boost of adrenaline? From the moment you start into the first drop, I found myself laughing for the entirety of the ride. This is a fun coaster, an obvious 10 rating for the fun factor. One that I could ride almost all day. And I'll discuss that mostly part here shortly, but as all you need to know, El Toro is a blast. If you want to mix things up, try different rows as the front and back deliver different experiences. Sit in the back if you want that epic first drop ejector air, or move up to the front if you want to experience longer sustained ejector air time on those two back-to-back -back air time hills. Or just sit in the middle if you're a baby. El Toro has the right seat for you. Originality. What makes El Toro so unique is that it takes your basic out-and-back layout and cranks it up to 11. 
by looking at this roller coaster, you might not think much of it, or you might even think it'll be similar to another hyper coaster since the styles tend to fall an out on back layout as well. But El Toro keeps you moving at max speed the whole way through. You fly over those airtime hills as the coaster seems like it's trying to kick you off. You know, just like what a bull would do. The second half of the spaghetti bull section changes gears and leaves the basic out and back design and goes for some crazy high speed turns. It feels unpredictable, which is what makes those high speed turns so much fun. When El Toro opened, it had the steepest drop on a wooden coaster at 76 degrees. It's still impressive if you ask me. It also features a cable lift, which I think it's the first wooden coaster to incorporate the cable lift, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. El Toro was also the fastest wooden coaster at 70 miles per hour, still an impressive stat for a wooden coaster. El Toro gets another 10 rating for originality. Ride smoothness. So, this was the category I was most worried about when rewriting this coaster 11 years later. Would it still be butter smooth as it was when it opened? The answer to that is no. It's not butter smooth anymore, but it's not overly rough. El Toro, for the most part, is pretty smooth, with a little rattle here or there, but it has two problem areas. First area that could use a little work is the turnaround. It gets pretty rough when you bottom out into the turn. It's not terrible, but enough to be uncomfortable. The second spot, which is the worst of the two, is right after that last ejector airtime hill. You seem to hit like what I'm calling a pothole. It's a rather intense bump that if you don't prepare for it, it can be painful. If Six Flags were to retract this section, I could almost overlook that turnaround part. But yeah, both areas could use a little TLC. But that's about the majority of any roughness you'll experience on this ride. These two spots are actually what kept me from riding this roller coaster all day. Some might not find these moments as rough. If you pick a middle row of any car, the roughness isn't as pronounced, but still noticeable. Unfortunately, it's not as smooth as it was 11 years ago, but for a wooden coaster, I'm truly amazed how, how well it has held up. I mean, two spots aren't awful, and by no means a deal breaker, I'm giving El Toro a score of 7 for smoothness. Okay, the final score comes to 9.4, which is a fantastic rating. If we could travel back in time when El Toro was brand new, this review would be a perfect 10 for sure. But years have gone by, the ride has aged gracefully, I will say. It's still a beast of a ride and any modern coaster should still be jealous of the airtime this thing delivers. El Toro is another must-ride coaster for enthusiasts. Honestly, if you're a fan of airtime, there's really only one other coaster that beats this one out, and that's Steel Vengeance. My personal score for El Toro is going to be a 10. This has been my favorite roller coaster for 11 years. Until I rode Steel Vengeance, this was the ride I used to measure every coaster against. In a way, airtime has been spoiled by El Toro, because it does it so well. I would get bored of your basic floater airtime. I wanted that intense ejector airtime that El Toro delivers. It really was a treat to rewrite this coaster after so many years. Again, I'm surprised how well it has held up over the years. Hopefully I don't go another 11 years before rewriting this coaster again. Well, thank you for watching today's review. Let me know what you think of El Toro in the comments below. As always, please subscribe so you don't miss out on more great content coming your way by X Screen Thrills.